If you've looked into building an AI-powered application recently, probably notice that there are a lot of frameworks and libraries out there that expect you to be running Python or JavaScript on the back end. So in today's video, I want to take a look at how we can build an AI-powered chatbot using Java and Spring Boot on the back end. Today, we'll be working with Langchain, which you might be familiar with from Python or JavaScript. It's a library that helps us orchestrate between different LLM actions and chain together things and call agents and stuff. So we're going to use this library to help us build an AI application using Spring Boot on the back end. For that, we're going to use the Langchain 4J Java version. This is up on GitHub, and as far as I can tell, it's a community project, and it's pretty new. So there's not a whole lot of documentation here yet, but there are a lot of good examples in the code that will help us get started. So we can click into any of these examples, and this will get us started. We are going to build an application that has a Spring Boot backend and a React front end. We're going to use the open source Hilla framework for that. It's going to allow us to do type safe backend calls, and it's going to give us a lot of components that we can use to build this app real quick. I already have a starting point for us built. It's an application that has two views, a chat view and a streaming chat view. So initially, we're going to take a look at just doing synchronous calls to open AI to get chat responses. And then we're going to take a look at a more advanced example where we're actually streaming the response that we're getting from the open AI API and streaming that all the way into our front end. Okay, so let's take a look at the application that we have. It's a standard Spring Boot project in that we have a uh, source main Java folder here with a Spring Boot application. What makes Hilla a little bit special is that it also has this front end folder, which is the React application that we're building. So they're both living in the same project. And when we change the backend code, it will automatically generate some TypeScript code for us to call in the front end. So that's going to make it really quick and easy for us to put together this application. So we already saw that we have these two views. We have a chat view and a streaming chat view here. They're just placeholders for now. And here in the back end, we don't really have anything besides an empty service package where we're going to start building this out. Before we can get to there, though, we need to go into our POM file and just make sure that we have Langchain for J added as a dependency. So by the time you look at the video, the version is probably different, but just make sure you get the latest version and actually run a Maven install so you have the latest version installed. All right, so now that we have everything ready to get going, let's create a new service class for us called Chat Service. The chat service is going to be the intermediary between OpenAI and our front end. So it's going to call OpenAI, get the response from there, and send it over to our client, what we call it. So we're going to make this into a service class, and we're going to add a browser callable annotation here. So this is a hella specific thing that makes this service callable from TypeScript. And we're going to take a look at that in just a second. And also, I'm going to do anonymous allowed. So for this demo, we're not going to deal with Spring Security Setup. But if you wanted to, you can certainly do that as well. Now, since we're calling OpenAI, we need to get an API key here. I have the OpenAI key already set up as an environment variable. So what we want to do then in our service is use that variable. I'm going to do that by defining a new string uh, field here called AI API key. And we're going to get the value by using Spring to actually inject that here. So we're just going to say that we want open API key. So if we have a environment variable name like this, we can access it in Spring like this. All right, simple enough. The next thing that we need to do then is go into the Lang4j examples here and see how this works. So see that we need this interface that we want to call. And then we're going to use this AI service builder to actually get an implementation for that interface. And that expects to get in a couple of things. So one is a chat memory. So how many messages do we want to keep track of as we're chatting? And the other thing is the API key. And that's going to give us this assistant. So all this code needs to go somewhere. We can't do that in the constructor because we're using the value injection here. So we need to do a post construct method. So I'm going to do a void init method here. And this is going to be annotated with post construct so that we can run this right after the bean has been created. In here, we're going to define all of these things. And let me hide that on the side so we get some more space. Obviously, we don't have the assistant interface. So let's go ahead and copy that over as well. And this means that 
once we run AI services.builder with assistant, we should get an assistant that has one method that takes in a string message, returns a string for the answer, and that's what we want to call. I'm going to refactor this into a field so that we can access it from elsewhere. And I'm going to provide a new API to our client browser. So we're going to essentially use the same exact signature here. So we can just go here and say public string chat, and that's going to return what, whatever we get from calling assistant.chat with that message. And of course we need the return here. Okay. And let's see what else. All right. So API keys is something that we don't have here. We're just going to use the injected value here instead. And right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to build the application. So build, build project like this. And what that does is it's going to allow Hilla to generate the TypeScript methods for accessing the service from uh, React. Speaking of React, let's jump into our view code here. And just as a reminder, we're now in the front end folder under the chat view. And what we want to do here is we want to define a React state to keep track of all the messages that we have. And then we want to have components that are able to show that list of messages and a component that's able to allow us to input and send a new message. Now, the other thing that Hilla makes easier for us is that it comes with this big library of components that we can use to build apps quicker with. So I'm going to actually pull out two components from there, one being the message list, which is for displaying a list of messages, and the other one being a message input, which is used for actually inputting messages. So if we save this and go into our application here, you can see we have a message input here. The message list is compacted here because it's empty right now. So since I am inside of a column flex box here, what I can do here is give this a class name of flex grow like this, and that'll allow the message list to grow and take up all the space that we have here. All right, so then let's go ahead and define that state. So we're going to have a const for messages and set messages so we can set the state messages like this. And we're going to get these two values by calling use state. So just standard React stuff here. We're going to type this since we are in TypeScript. So I'm going to say that this is a uh, message list item and we're going to import that. So that's the type that this message list assumes that we'll get. And we're going to actually not have one item, but an array of items. And we're going to start out with an empty array of items. So with those defined, we can pass those messages in to our message list here. And of course, we don't have any messages yet, but once we do, we're able to show them here. Okay. So the second part we want to do then is we want to hook up the input to actually call that backend service that we just created. So for that, we're going to create a new function. So we're going to call this send message, and this will take in a message, which will be a string. And since we are going to do asynchronous calling, we're going to call the backend. We're going to actually turn this into an async function like this. And what I want to do in here, first of all, is I want to display the outgoing message. So you can see your own message displayed here first. And then when the message comes back from the LLM open AI, we're going to display that. So we'll start off by using the set messages state to update the state to include a new message. So we're going to say set messages, and we're going to get all the old messages that we have in there. And we're going to return a new array. The new array will have all those old messages and then one new message. The new message will have a username of say you and the text should be our message like this. All right. And I imported something I shouldn't have. So that broke. All right. So that looks good. So now that we have the function, let's hook it up here to our message input. So we'll say on submit, we're going to get an event and then we're going to call send message with the event detail value, which will be the value of the field here. And we can go ahead and give that a try. So if we now write something hit here, it's going to show this new message because we mutated the state here. All right. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and call the backend and then display whatever response we get from there as the next message. All right. So we're going to get the response. So const response is equal to await, and then we're going to call our chat service with chat, we're going to pass in the message like this. So you can see we're able to call our Java message with the same exact signature that we have with the same return type, same parameters, everything. And this response 
we can see is a string, just as we defined in Java. So what we want to do then essentially is do this exact same thing. But instead of saying you, we're going to say assistant. And instead of the message, we're going to say response here. And let's go ahead and try this out. So let's say hello there. And sure enough, our assistant gives us an answer. So we can say, hey, my name is Marcus. And it should say something. And because we have that chat memory there, it should be able to remember me. So I should be able to ask it a question like, hey, what's my name? And sure enough, it remembers that my name is Marcus. So this here is a pretty nifty, very functional chat already, but it has a big problem. So let's say, write me a song about coding. And what's going to happen is that now that it's actually generating a whole lot more text, this whole thing starts to take a lot of time and that doesn't look very nice. So now we're just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting for this to return. It's not really nice. So ideally what we want to do is stream that response. So as the AI is writing its response, we want to be able to display that to the end user instantaneously. So very similar to how, how chat GPT works on, on the web, if you ever use that. So for that, let's jump back into the example code here on the Lang4j site and look at the streaming example. So it looks very similar. We're going to use the AI services to create an assistant. But we're going to use a streaming chat model instead. And instead of just returning a string, we now have these on next, on complete, on error, and so on. So let's jump into our chat service and actually change this to, to work something similar to that. So right now we have this one interface for assistant, and I'm going to create another one here, leaving the old one in place so you can explore both of them in the finished source code. But what I want to do here is essentially have an assistant that returns a token stream instead. So we're going to call this our streaming assistant and return a token stream here. And what we want to do is more or less the same as here, but we're going to use the streaming model. So we're going to say our streaming is equal to all of this. Then we're going to change this to streaming assistant like that. And what we need to change here is then have a streaming chat language model like this. And we're going to use the open AI streaming chat model. So API is the same. There's just a streaming word sprinkled in here and there. Again, I'm going to put this into a field here so we can call it from other methods. And what I want to do then is create a new a method here that returns a flux of strings. So flux, if you're not familiar, is from Project Reactor. It's a data type that you can subscribe to. So as new data comes in, we'll get that data passed along to us. So I'm going to do a public method that returns a flux of strings. Let's go ahead and import that like that. And we're going to call this chat stream. It'll take in the same string message as before like this. It's just going to look a little bit different. So unfortunately, the data type, the token stream is not a standard thing that Spring really understands about. So I'm going to programmatically create a flux and kind of pass values along. So I'm going to create a sinks.many of type string, and we can call this our sync. And this will be on back pressure buffer. So we want to buffer if, if we get more values than we're able to send out, let's not drop words from the middle of a sentence because that would not be great. Once we have that, we can then hook this up to our streaming assistant. So we're going to call streaming assistant dot chat, passing the message. And then we can say on next, we want to call say, try emit next. And then we're going to say on complete, try emit complete on error, sync error like this. And then finally, we're going to call start to get everything started. And then we're going to return our sync as a flux. So that's a little bit more plumbing. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking the Langchain token stream and we're converting it to a flux, which is a more standard data type. Very good. So we're going to again build the application, let Hilla generate those, those TypeScript accessors for us. And we're going to go into our front end folder again. I can actually go ahead and let's copy everything that we have as a starting point for our streaming chat view. It's going to look a little bit different, but basics will be very much the same. 
So we have the message list, we have the input, we send a message. So we start by setting the message to our username, and then we need to get a response. So this is where things start to get different. Now we need to change how we actually call the service here. So instead of just calling it and expecting a response, we want to subscribe to it. So we're going to call the chat service again, and we're going to call chat stream. We're going to pass in that message here so it knows what to answer. And then we're going to say on next. So this is a little bit different. Before, when we got just the response, we created a new message based on that. What we need to do now is essentially when the first piece of that message comes in, we would need to create the message. And then as new parts of that message come in, we need to append to that existing message. So let's do something like this. So we're going to get chunks of this one at a time. And I'm going to keep track of the first chunk because we need to handle that one differently. So let's do a let first equals true like this. And then let's check here. So if first and chunk. So sometimes OpenAI returns an empty value as the first piece of that stream. And that's not helpful. So we don't want to just display that when we get an empty value. We want to actually get a value there. So once that happens, let's go ahead and create this message. So again, we're going to say assistant, we'll say chunk. And then once we've set that, we're going to say that first is equal to false. So that way we can drop through. And what we need to do then in the else case is we need to find the last message and append to that. So we're still going to use set messages here as the basis for updating this. And we're going to get the current messages that we have. And we're going to return something. But instead of just returning an array, we need to do a little bit more work. So first of all, we need to find that last message. So the last message is going to be equal to the current messages. And we're going to get last item out of there. Then we're going to say that we want to take the last message, the text, and we want to append the incoming chunk to it. And then we're going to return the updated new array. So again, those old messages and then our last message like this. And we're creating a new array here, which means that a React is picking up on that change and rendering stuff as it's happening. So let's go ahead and see if we manage to code everything right. So if we go into our streaming chat here and try it out. Hello. And yeah, that <laughs> didn't exactly work the way that we had expected. And, and the reason is I'm actually returning all the messages and the last. So we're just adding more and more messages here, which is not what we we're trying to accomplish here. So let's actually do messages dot slice zero to negative one. So just omit the last one from there. Save. Let's go ahead and refresh that and try this out. Hello. All right. That seems much better. All right. Me a poem about coding. And sure enough, now we can see the completion is coming in as it's getting generated. So this is a much nicer user experience. All right, so there you have it. A little bit longer video this week. Hopefully it was useful to you. In the coming weeks, I want to cover some other tools like Semantic Kernel and Spring AI. If there are any other tools or parts of this tool that you want me to cover in more detail, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.